Sup Shitters, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to SP Reviews where today we're going to be reviewing the latest album from an ex named JC Croyle titled Slayin' It and if we switch over to here and if we put the album art up on the screen you are probably going to be able to tell that this is indeed a Christmas album. At the time of reviewing this it is currently near the end of May so it's a little bit earlier than I would usually get the Christmas stuff coming in for these reviews, but that's fine. This is set to release on November 1st, 2022, so I get to listen to it well before the, the date that it's going to be put out into the world, and that's totally fine. I love Christmas, and while I love Christmas, I will try not to allow it to bias my review of this music. We've got a total of eight tracks here uh, with JC Crawl's spin on it. I have also reviewed music from JC Crawl in the past and have enjoyed my time with it for the vast majority of it. So that's going to be cool. We'll just start with Dick Those Halls. And we'll listen through it from start to finish, see what we think. Let's go. Oh, it's jazzy. It's funky. It's fusion, you know? We got some extended harmonies in there straight away. We've got that catchy, easily identifiable and memorable motif there. But JC Croyle is very eager off the bat to make it his own. What I like about this arrangement here is that he's trying to keep it into a more straightforward 4-4 uh, arrangement where like um, it has sort of a free form. It doesn't have an even da 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 boom. And it kind of twists and turns to suit the way of the verse. But because we've got an instrumental here with these guitar, bass, and drum parts, you can kind of uh, make it a little bit more sort of, um, you can have that consistent eighth note groove without changing up the chop of it too much. It's kind of, busy there's a gridness to it but also the way it's been produced is nice as well there's a sense of clarity with some of those higher frequency instruments a rolling bass line there lovely arrangement there Again, nice triplet, uh, 16th triplets at the end. Um, great fill there. I mean, J a lot of JC Crawl stuff is drum oriented, although it does play the other instruments on the record. And I, and I like the fact that we're doing something a little bit different than just the hand drums and the ba 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 kind of stuff, you know? It's great to have a full uh, acoustic drum kit on there. Um, works a lot better with the other elements of the mix. Got several different voices there, along with those really frenetic drum fills on the snares. Oh, we're bringing it down a little bit. Okay. Again, the buzz rolls with the octave runs on the bass and those sizzling sort of lead sections. Nice little bit, of, little bit of distortion on there, but not too much. You don't want to saturate it too much. So it's nice to have a little bit of improvisation here to not just feel like you've got to be too true to the original structure and progression of Deck Those Holes, you know? Or Deck the Holes, which I assume it was based off. I like the folks on those crashes and rides here. And the occasional break beats in a way of tripping up those um and a fade out here very classy don't get that often enough nowadays having that fade out with those instruments in the mix 
I feel that was a fitting tribute to Dick the Hose. You know, you could hear again, you could hear the original, the original melodic motif that's instantiated there. Bum, 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 But he doesn't commit to the whole way through it. He makes it his own by kind of trailing off or leaving it to a dominant seventh chord, leaving it open to interpretation. Because again, we're not trying to authentically recreate the originals. It's that kind of fusion, instrumental Christmas, jazz, ambient fusion, instrumental rock that we've got going on here. Uh, but great start. Dick those hooves. G, good King Winkless. Winsless. Is that it? I'm not as familiar with that one. I could be wrong. Oh, that bass tone is sensational, dude. It just fills up the low end so well. You know, there's this nice sense of wholeness with it that, you know, while it's nice to have the bass be because of how well it fills up that space, you get a sense of airiness to it. It's always X more complete when it's, when it's, when it's part of the jam. What's the tension in the arrangement, though? Ah, oh, I get it. They got that major turn. Bum, 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 bum. You know, we're not too eager again to rush through that easily identifiable concept. We've got a slow groove in there. We're relaxed. We're chilling. We're vibing with it. There's a resonance in the bass guitar that I can hear. There's a resonance, and I'm not sure if that's something that we're comfortable with, or maybe it's the headphones I'm wearing, but like, it's, no, I, I think it gives the bass guitar some character, um, like in the 100 to 150 hertz area. Again, it's fine because you got the side chaining of the kicks sorted. These blues elements here are very welcome. And the triplet groove we've got on the, the, the right cymbals here matches really well with the slow dive we've got going on here with these distorted guitars and that bass just fills up the low end with, with not just the root notes, you know, the bass bass guitar is exploring the fretboard. We're not we're not slacking, you know. I wonder how many guitar voices we have there, because it sounds like we've got at least three of them, you know? Again, and that's the, the when you know how to play the gu bass guitar effectively, sometimes you can even get away with not needing to have an additional rhythm guitar pan to the sides or to double track them. You can just have that lead on there, especially if the bass is thick enough in the mix, be because that's all you need for an a harmonic or like or a melodic accompaniment um and it leaves space for like keys or something else to come along later on are we rolling with the pentatonics or blues scales or something like that in this part I'm liking how some of the notes hit and how we kind of vary between a ball and then like allowing some more staccato um, acrobatic sections. You know, and just, I, I know I'm stopping it a lot and I know it's probably irritating, but there's just so much to appreciate. I'm liking uh, the way that we're rolling these uh, melodies on top, you know? It's clear we are trying to pay homage to the original, but at the same time, we're not trying to show more articulation or we're not trying to go sort of solo virtuoso on it, you know? We, we, I'm sure we could probably fit shredding in this somewhere, but it's more about not only having the initial voice, 
but somehow extending it and making it bigger or better than it was or more original to JC Crawl style. And I think especially, again, just these kind of clashy sevenths that we have here and he's rolling between the octaves and the other instruments. It's a nice mix. The clickiness of the kick is really helpful here. You know, I am listening to the way that the drums have been mixed alongside the bass, and I know I'm not. I'm no longer talking about the bass resonance there in that 100, 150 hertz range. But just the clickiness of that kick is helpful here. I know we could have gone for a full bore, more boomy kind of bass if we wanted to, having that like mid hertz resonance there on on that part of the kit, um, just allows it to stand out even among the guitar parts. You know, I'm glad that we didn't try to side chain the guitar parts. You just need to keep that low and tamed. We Three Kings, track number three. Nice resonance on those snare hits, dude. Oh, we're going for some chords now. Am I tripping? It sounds like most of the energy is over. Oh, okay. is most energy over this side? It sounds like most of the energy in this part is on this side and that side. Are we going to get more on the left side of the stereo field at some point? Am I tripping? No, I'm having a real moment here because it doesn't sound like there's anything on this side. Hang on, I'll go back to Kid Good King Winkless. Yeah, there's something going on here because G GKW is fine. We three kings. It sounds like most of the energy is in the first, middle, and the side. Again, I love the harmonies here. I like our extension of the original theme. I like how we're breaking it up and going to some halftime parts and how we have some palm muted da blah 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 um sort of uh original concepts here but it... there is a bit more on this side now but it's unusual the panning of the instruments is nice there I like how the guitars have been done here you know you get a clear difference in tone and the EQing filtering with those rhythm and lead parts. It's ferocious. I haven't really heard We Three Kings been done like this, you know. It's almost got a power metal-ish kind of vibe to it. Let that distortion, let that feedback hang, man. Yep. Because we're going with sections where we have those whole note chords held, and then we go back to the eighth note grooves where things are a little bit more percussive. Nice contrast to ABAB, you know? Just not sure about that panning. Because it sound, I can hear the drums occasionally go onto this side of the stereo field. It kind of sounds less kind of like, oh, holy night, and more like the three kings are coming to slay some stuff. <laughs> you know, it, it's got that venom into that, that intense, the animosity to that. That is, that is a filthy distortion tone, dude. I love it. It's gritty, man. I wasn't expecting this to be done like that. And I'm not sure why. I know the rock fusion has the rock in it. But, and, and I'm liking that we were comfortable with those guitar harmonies. Um, I also love, just before we go into Silent Night, 
the fact that we're not trying to people please by putting like bells and ho, 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 you know little chanting parts in it we're literally just having a rock christmas fusion album and i i adore that to pieces it's very authentic to jc crawl style and i i'm really happy about that nice uh, way to end it with those crashes yeah no my ears aren't deceiving me there's i think we need to look at we three kings and just double check before the the, the official release on the first of november that there's nothing weird going on with we three kings is panning oh this is a lot more chill isn't it slower slower tempo allowing those notes to glide a little bit longer rolling with those ghost notes on the snare that nice wire sound to it There's more of a sense of unison with the bass guitar parts in here, even though they're not coming in at the same time. Oh, we were flirting with that boom. I, I wasn't sure about that initially, but we did resolve it and we resolved it in a fashion that made sense. Nice up here, Joe. Cool. Cool, cool. I'm glad we didn't bend that. Nice vibrato there, dude. Classy. Was that a unison bend in there? Just add a little bit of tension in there to then resolve it again. Nice voicing there. Oh, there we go. There's the divert. There's the, that's the turn away from the original right there. Smart move. I'm happy with that. I eh? hopefully you are too watching this. <laughs> nice development and increase in intensity on the drums there. I like how we've split the song into two different sections for this three-minute track. You don't have to have the first the same as the second. You know, make this one a little bit more groovy. Add some sixteenths or some ornamentation in there. Keep it fresh. Rim shots. We're, we're, we're near violinning those guitar parts, aren't we? Oh, it's so sultry. You get lulled into it, don't you? And then boom. Yeah, caught it. This, this approach to it, I think, is very appropriate. You couldn't have gotten away with the brashness of the Re Three Kings. This is never, this was always meant to be more of a chilled out, kind of almost a lullaby, you know? Now this always kind of worries me because we're at that two minute mark. I feel like we've had a lot of what this track has to offer. What is JC Croyle going to do differently here to keep it fresh? Okay, oh, that was some neat. That was some, some articulate dexterous ride work there we didn't slam it we're going for those bells but that wasn't the way i was expecting it to end i thought we were just gonna go but no we we expanded upon it a little bit we went our own direction for it but we decided to to, to progress away from what we had instantiated initially, especially as for the most part, that first third of the song kind of followed along near verbatim to the main melodic sort of idea, the melody of, of the original Silent Night, um, which I think was helpful again as it's a cover. You, you, it's okay to bring in an extra bit as long as it's engaging. And while I'm like, 
I'm I'm happy with how it ended. I still prefer ba da dum bum ba bum bum. But that's just because I grew up with it. It doesn't mean that I don't like this. Um, and who am I to be the arbiter of what makes a good Christmas song? <laughs> you know, um, I can nonetheless review and analyze and appreciate that it makes sense what I've heard from J.C. Crow so far over the various albums. You know, like I've, I've heard music from the Sharks and and Paint. Uh, it makes sense. It's cool. It's cool. We got God rest the G men. Well, this is a little bit a little bit quicker, man. Oh. Not I'm not familiar with what this is based off, by the way. I live in New Zealand and we don't have some of the same Christmas carols as people do, for instance, over in the States, for example. Um, so there may be something in here that I've not heard before. So I might not be able to appreciate how it sounds similar to the original. So, I, but, but, but nonetheless, that's actually potentially establishing there could be a stronger case for me having a valid review of it because I'm not familiar or biased towards the original. Oh, I like that Phrygian mode that we're rolling with that flat second, I think. I can hear those double kicks in there and that riot cymbal is sizzling, dude. He's like notched it so that you've got the cymbals in this part and then the guitars and then the kicks. It's it's nice, it's nicely balanced. Obviously it's drum focused at this point, considering the dexterity of those parts there, the finesse. Oh, we're Back to this motif. Okay, cool. So I get it. So we're using the drum as a break instrument. That's cool. We uh this part here sounds like things are very, very well glued together in the mix. It'd be interesting to see the amount of dynamic range in parts like this, just to uh, yeah. Because it doesn't sound like it's pumping or anything like that, but there's a very fine line being drawn here, and that is actually testament to the post-production involved on this album. Again, you can hear stuff clearly. The mix is good. The mix is good. It would have been difficult to mix something like this, especially with the mount going on the percussion here at section. You know, like, how do you have all these drum fills yet still pay equal attention to what's happening on with the melodies and the guitar parts? Fine bass line though. That's a really fun bum 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 bum. And what's cool about that bass line is it's got such great utility. He's used it with various different drum grooves. And it still sticks the same regardless because I think he's still accenting the, the, the drum kit on those notes of the bass. Or at least trying to a comp, a, allow for space for that. It's really, it's really great. Um, a really great sense of musicality about that. And we're just finishing, what? Yeah, I'm not sure what Carol that was referencing, but I nonetheless enjoyed the ride. You know, I could see it was kind of split in the middle with that kind of drum fill in the center, and I, I think that's great, you know? Hopefully, if someone watching this can sort of let me know, uh, I might even like listen to the original after this, just to be able to get a reference for how we got here from where where it came from, if that makes sense. We had five really solid tracks so far, you know. Hey, it's, it's a lot of what I'm familiar with from JC Croyle. He doesn't disappoint. And we've got Joy to My Drums, though, track number six. This is a longer one at five minutes. I mean, as you can tell, I'm basically turning into a reaction video. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, I get it. It's joy to the world, isn't it? Yeah. What are we going to do with five minutes of real estate, though? Okay, nice buzz roll into this. I like how I'm messing with the minor major parallels here in their melody. How we? What do we? How long are we gonna keep this tension for, dude? I was wondering how long we were gonna keep that tension for. What is it? A transitory device? Are we using it to go back into the start? Is this gonna be something we repeat a few times? Where are we going, JC Croyle? What are we up to? <laughs> um, you know, I think part of what allows me to sort of reference this and make it so that it's sort of Christmassy is the fact that I know the original tracks. That's a fizzy distortion sound we've got there on that rhythm section. So we are going to do another time of it, aren't we? Because we already had like a couple of times of it and it's 1 minute 30. So I don't know where we're headed with this. Obviously, we, I haven't listened to it, but what, what, I'm just standing always now, aren't I? Good. I need a change because I feel like if we had just had five minutes of this, it would have been too much of that same theme, especially when we aren't too many different fretboard adventures with the guitar parts or the bass parts. I think we had an additional palm muted rhythm section in that, that previous bit. Um, but I just, I'm so glad that we're not taking the listeners attention for granted here. I mean, we are repeating that melody there, but you know, this could be like a position where we could be like, oh, you know, screw it. Let's just put some bells in there or something like that. Although I feel as if we are just simply going to stick with the with the more traditional sort of rock fusion instruments like, you know, the rock, the, the bass and, and the drums. And then there's nothing wrong with that. This is JC Crow's album. It's his Christmas album, slaying it, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that.
Bravo, JC Coyle. As one drummer to another, bravo. That was magnificent, and you should be very proud of yourself. And it's one of the few times where I've heard a drum solo like that in the middle of a song and thought, damn, I wasn't expecting it, but it works. And it's a great way to, to I just, uh, that's just, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. Let's continue. That's by far my favorite of the album. Quite honestly, like I would probably, can, and I would, I would buy the album because of that. That alone, that joy to my drums. Of course, there's going to be a drum solo in there. It's literally joy to my drums. It is him paying homage to how much he loves his drums and the passion for that. Why did I not see a drum solo coming in the middle? That's made my night. You don't need me to to tell you or explain to you that this guy is a phenomenal percussionist. If you can't tell that just by listening to it. I don't know what what's going on. Have you been? <laughs> where were you that that when they was doing that? Because it's not just the work on the toms and and the snare hits like those bat buzz rolls and everything like that. But it's also the 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 cymbal hits and the little bits of finesse and articulation on those and the little hits, little shimmers and knowing exactly which cymbal to play where and everything like that. Because each of the cymbals has a different function. Obviously, you have the not don't you, you just have the hi hats. You have like the crashes, rides, chinas, bells, splashes, and all that. And, and, you know, you've got to figure out where to put your hands where. And that's just not something that comes unless you're really experienced. And after that, of course, we had the little bills, those little ghost notes, those little mezzo piano parts. Uh, the pia uh, Not mezzo piano, the pianissimo parts. or Yeah, pianissimo parts or the piano. You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's cool. It's, it's cool, man. It's cool. We've got Noel the first next though, okay? Noel the first. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, six, four, okay. Oh. Oh, what is the name of this carol? Noel the first. Again, we're splitting it up and allowing that last note to hang there so we can allow the bass and the bass drums to fill in the gaps. It's so much more relaxed and chilled out than what we had previously. Like you compare that to the intensity of the drum solo that we had in Joy to My Drums. Or some of the other tracks we've had like fairly full on like We Three Kings. There's such tonal and textural range within this album. A sense of understanding of what is required in regards to pay homage to the originals whilst making it their own, you know? Going down a little bit, okay. These jazzy modulations and flat notes we have occasionally, these parallels we have in the melodic sections that split up that melody and make it a little bit less cheesy, 
It's 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 in, it's sick. It's it's good decisions making on um J C Crawl's part. You know, that is another indication again of how we have someone who is not a beginner. You know, I get it. You can easily shred the intro to it or like the main themes of each of these and not miss them, but you can get subtle emotional differences by flattening the note occasionally. It just makes it more exciting. Even in a situation like this where things are kind of mellow and there's that hiss coming from the cymbals as well which is kind of weirdly soothing I suppose you know it's a weird word though if you use cymbals but Back to that original, um, original lick there. I like how we're not rolling with the traditional major triads either. You know, again, um, are we rolling with some sixths in there or something like that? I wouldn't put it past him to be rolling with some sixths. I could be wrong. There could be some chromatics in there for all I know, you know? Because it's like the thinnest of distortion in there, like a minimal amount of gain. I'm not sure which pickup position he's using, but it's just enough to be present without overwhelming. I was kind of wondering where that rhythm section bah, 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 was going here, but we appear to have resolved everything back to how it used to be. You can tell I'm just kind of buffing my head indiscriminately now. It's because my brain is just feeling very comfortable with what we have from JC Coyle so far. And I, I've enjoyed the Christmassy aspect of it, but I just want to sort of like relax and listen to this all the way over again. And hopefully if you've enjoyed listening to this album so far, you'll want to go check it out too when it drops on November the 1st, you know? I think that's a good time to release an album, you know, December is when everyone else releases their ones. Get, get in early, you know, but not October. <laughs> October is the forbidden month for Christmas carols. Cool, man. I, I heard that theme in there. I understood that idea. I recognized it. JC made it his own. I haven't really heard a version of these Christmas carols like this before. So he's got something con considerably original and I love it. We've got one more song, and I'm going to completely butcher the pronunciation of this potentially, but I will try. And please do not be offended, as I am not m murdering this on purpose, okay? Shedrick Svachi Vesher. Hopefully that's anywhere close to it. If it's not, I apologize profusely because I don't mean to cause any disrespect. It's just a really hard, those are really hard words for me to say. Oh, that's a, that's a punk. That is a punk tone that we got on those guitars, dude. Oh, nice work on the floor toms, though. Oh! Oh, I know this. I know this, dude. I would, I would, I, I, the reason I know this is I heard it first from like the Metallica. They did it, they did a version of this with like an orchestra. But I, I'm obviously enjoying listening to this too. 
Oh, nice. Got harmonies here. Are those ports? I believe they'll be ports, wouldn't they? Are we trying to sort of force it into a traditional 4-4 structure by repeating it one more time the way we need to? Oh? Which kind of reminds me of Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm kind of... <laughs> it's a... It's an unusual tone on that lead there. That's in relief. The bass hasn't changed though. It is just there. It is thumping. It is the heartbeat. The life force of that group. Actually, no, I shouldn't say that. The drums are the heartbeat, man. They are the main force of the groove. The bass is just providing that floor, that foundation. Are we going for a full guitar solo at this point? No, we're still voicing within the range. Okay. Are we box soloing by chance? Oh, nice break. This is probably one of the more original ones, I suppose. That fuzz is intimidating, dude. I've never heard fuzz on a guitar like that before, dude. Proper, proper technical drum work there. Works well with the increase, the intensity, the crescendo we're going on here with the other instruments in the mix. Okay, all right, we're going. Whoa. Hey, the bass is getting on it now. That's fun. That's kind of fun. We've got a counter melody here. That was fun. My goodness. Again, I'll, I'll do, this is the last time I'll say it because I'm potentially irritating some people. Shedrick Shvachi Vesher. Before I go turn the camera on, this has definitely been a rock fusion drum based Christmas album, hasn't it? Because this is the conclusion of my review of Slaying It by JC Croyle. Ah, uh, what a ride we've had today with these A tracks. I suppose I should go through it from the usual way I do it. Um, which is, you know, obviously to start with like the stories, but then of course this was an instrumental record. So I suppose the stories that you'd have would need to be more based on the original instrument, the originals that were vocal led. And I, that's a very tricky thing to do. Just before we go any further to make, and I like to play a song as an instrumental is fine. You know, we, to, to write instrumentals, a lot of people write instrumentals and they do very, very well with it. But to be able to make your own version of a vocal focused track Especially a Christmas one where a lot of people are more familiar with like the, 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 the singing and the lyrics of it than anything else. That can potentially go wrong for a million reasons. And I think for the most part, I think each of these tracks handled telling the story really well in a way that was appropriate. Some of them sounded like kind of grandiose and in your face and kind of like We Three Kings was like those guitar harmonies were sensational. Dick the Halls, you know, was great. Jordan My Drums was my absolute favorite. That to me made the most sense from an instrumental perspective primarily because you did that drum solo in it. I didn't necessarily like, like I, again, I think that having that fuzziness to those harmonies as well in Shedrick Vyachi Vecchio was, was fine as well. 
I understand why we didn't go you know because that would have been maybe too literal too too close to the initial um silent night followed the original motif faithfully and it went off on its own little journey at the end but that that was fine uh, we needed to have a little bit of a a, a a brief from that a break from that especially for that last bit and it was nice to for jc crawl to have a bit more time in that song to articulate himself further on I, I think, um, in general, the way that we uh, expressed ourselves through the guitar melodies and the bass and drum parts to make up for a lack of vocal direction was, was, was absolutely fine. The voicing, the original motifs was well done. For the most part, we didn't just copy and paste. You know, if we were going to follow the original sort of sequences, we maybe cut them in half and then allowed the last note of the half to run. And then we went and did this uh, and then in the next bar we allowed plenty of space then for the bass and the drums to do a call and response if they need to do a fill or there might have been another guitar part that played some chords there or some dominant sevenths or something like that um when we did roll faithfully with the um with uh with the the melodies there the the actual voicing of those guitar melodies there um that were obviously a replacement for the the, the singing they were faithful, as far as I'm aware, to the way, the, the emotional tone of them, especially Silent Night. Silent Night, there was a sweetness to it that I really um, appreciated. I think that if you tried to go too far out there with Silent Night, it would have maybe alienated from the, the tranquility of the original. You know, it's meant to be like a peaceful thing. If you added some really dissonant extensions or something like that in the harmony, if you had any, any, any new sort of raucous drum fills, it would have it would have been a little bit too chaotic for it so i'm glad that jc croyle understood that just because we were trying to make a track our own doesn't mean we need to completely destroy the foundation that it's potentially its success of the original was built upon um the structuring of these tracks um we we didn't just stick with what was originally sort of uh pr pr appropriated I'm, I'm glad that we didn't do rudolph the red nose reindeer i i think we avoided the really super cheesy kind of bargain basement um the bargain basement <laughs> christmas carols dick those holes we three kings silent night a lot of these tracks were uh, split in two you had like one motif and then you had a repetition of it in the second half some of them like silent night that were split in two and then you had an additional bit on the end uh shedrick shvachi vesher i don't know what the structure of that was because i got lost with the second half of the concept being removed and, and avoided he might have tried to mirror that later on in the lower register but i couldn't quite find it and that's fine you know he made it his own um joining my drums its structure was like kind of moving your way towards that solo and i think because of what we'd had previously to me because the drums had been so thoroughly respectful of the other instruments for the most part it, and seemed like an ego project but then that solo came in and it just ripped my expectations to shreds and i had a great time with that you know it was nice to have that bigger change later on in the album as opposed to earlier on i feel like that's the right time to do it and i'll be honest at five minutes i was like uh-oh are we not going to have enough to keep this exciting? But it definitely was. And you saw my face. I hope I came across like a kid because I genuinely did. I just love that JC Croyle can play that well, but he doesn't do it all the time. It's almost like the better you get an instrument, the more you need to know to play less in a, in a way, you know, because you can just do enough to be able to make it work and not use up all your energy at once. Allow the other parts of the arrangement to carry you a little bit. So yeah, lots of range all around. The, you know, the... The, the performances on the guitar, bass, and drums. I mean, the guitars were were fairly minimalist, actually. I mean, we we I mean, with individual parts, we had an interesting arrangement with some of the rhythm parts, with like the extended chords and some power chords and etc. And some intervals there where we might have rolled with some sort of major or minor ones. And again, the, the lead guitar voicings were there primarily to mirror the absence of the singing. And like in Shedrick Vishvachi Vichir, you know, it um allows us to uh provide a foil or like an additional bit of the harmony for the lead bits the bass guitar was explorative and i liked how it didn't just stick in the lower ranges or like follow the root notes i think it was good to do some arpeggiated parts some octave runs occasionally a little bit of slap sometimes and mostly finger style from what i understand the drums oh boy the drums they were the focal point of the entire experience like not necessarily i mean like i know how do i say this it literally says this is a Christmas album of a fusion rock nature with a drum focus. So obviously the drums were the focus, but at the same time, they were so supportive of the other elements. But when they had their time to shine, my goodness, I could not find a point to fault. The guy can play. The guy knows his kid inside and out. And he has that 
delicate expertise here where expertise here where he knows again that the more you play the less you do when unless it's appropriate to do so and he allowed himself that full range enjoyed in my drums to to have like two two and a half minutes spare for him to do his thing but of course he didn't just throw everything you at the center he staged that solo with the drum foot drum tom work and then the cymbal work and then the little builds later on and then he like led back into the rest of the elements with the guitar and bass tracks and it's just like so refreshing to hear someone who is that talented and that skilled but also knows to kind of hang back and have some restraint you don't need everything to be like ridiculous all the time and that's something that took me a long 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 time to learn i'm glad i did i'm just yeah the the, the instrument performances were the peak put for me i again i it's not like the the a lot of the musical sort of like the songs i'm familiar with the songs i i didn't really need to hear them again what i needed to hear is jc coil making them his own and for the most part that's exactly what happened the pr the production the recording mixing mastering i liked the the cueing the stereo panning i think i'm just gonna just just double check again there does sound like there is a focus and a center to write i would recommend before release double checking that there is not something happening with that left side of the stereo field. It's probably worth just checking out Silent Night before we release it to make sure there is some stuff happening on this left side. Um, that's it. Aside from that, everything else production-wise is fantastic. You know, the stereo, there weren't, it's a fairly raw performance on the guitar, bass, and drums. You didn't really need more than what we got here. It was enough to, it sounded well polished and while there is a lot of it sounded like that there was a lot of gluing going on with these instruments it's just that drum solo bit the drum solo told me that there was dynamic range because of the really quiet ghost hits when he did those little rises and stuff so it was a weird situation where things sounded as loud as they needed to be to stick together well but at the same time there were also quiet sections which turned to over i don't know how to feel about the limiting compression just simply because i don't understand how he managed to get it like that but I'm, I'm proud of him for, for, for that the studio side of things is, is fantastic it's just checking out again the stereo, left side of the stereo field for what silent night and then i think we're basically good to go um slaying it i just want to say that i suppose as a final comment you know this is a christmas album and is this uh is this christmasy and I, and I think that if you take it from the perspective of what i think a lot of us are taught as kids is whenever i mention christmas to kids they say that christmas is about presents because of course they do um uh, because in in my humble opinion christmas is a capitalist hellscape at times you know you you literally are the focus on spending and consumerism and uh, my my ideas on it aside which obviously aren't relevant to this review it's just nice to acknowledge i think that everyone has their own understanding and interpretation of what christmas not only should be like but that they should also people have views on what it should sound like and this is jc crawl's version of christmas for him and i can understand it from a musical perspective and i love the fact that he has taken the time to share his version of christmas with us even if you don't necessarily hear the christmas in it due to a lack of like the bells and all that kind of stuff and all the kind of you know like ding 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 you know there's instruments people use to make stuff sound christmasy without even really trying to make it original and for jc crow to do justice to the original concepts well you know also while performing it the way he did and producing it the way he did I just feel like that deserves some appreciation and respect. But that is effectively my review of JC Crowell slaying it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show JC Crowell some love via his various social medias and his Bandcamp page. Stay cool and stay safe, and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time. As he the hell more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world, and I'll catch you in the next review. Spider hands out.